go there champs, now let's talk about this Surface Pro 6. Now I'm gonna get the specs and just some stuff straight out of the way so I can dig into more performance, especially in content creation, video editing, etc. So you wanna upgrade that Windows Home to Windows Pro or just get killer prices on Windows, Office 2016 and cheap gaming keys, head on down to 09. Make sure you copy and paste my code from the description to get a price that's gonna make you go woo! Yes, now come on, if you guys are new around here, come on, get on the Woo train, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you like these type of videos. So first of all, the build quality, phenomenal. Microsoft make good products. They're always of the highest standard in terms of build quality, this sort of magnesium case, or whatever it is, with that matte black finish. Now you know me, I don't buy black stuff. I like white laptops, I like metal laptops, I buy white PlayStation, I buy white headphones, white PC, that's my thing. But this black is so good, I could rock it. Matte black finish, it looks superb. Highest build quality, you're gonna love it. It comes with the eighth generation quad cores now. So two extra cores, up to 40% more performance. Option of the i5-8250U and the i5-8650U. Now they're not the Whiskey Lake parts, which are due out actually this month. So didn't come with the latest Whiskey Lake parts, which they're gonna be called Coffee Lake. Yeah, it's very confusing. Nevertheless, there's no really big performance between the two. This is a powerhouse for a tablet. I mean, quad core on a tablet. We're talking i5, i7. It's pretty freaking good. 8 or 16 gigs RAM. The i5 is limited to 8. I'd like to have a fanless one, but with 16 gigs RAM. But currently at the moment, I can only see 16 gig in the i7 model. Now, you cannot upgrade anything on this. So get what you need. Get as much RAM as you can. I wouldn't worry about the process. i5, i7, not much difference the i7 will suck a bit more battery and it will be a bit more noisy that being said the thermals are controlled on the i7 very well and the fan is not that loud but if you want totally silent get the i5 but my biggest suggestion is get 16 gig so you're probably going to have to get the i7 and put up with that fan even though it is very quiet you know, it's got the 6, 8 megapixel cameras, whatever. Of course, you get the digitizer, Entrig digitizer, 496 pressure sensitivity points, Windows Hello supported, 128 gigabyte SSD, up to one terabyte NVMe drives, no keyboard and no pen in the box. So you have to buy those things separate. Now it's only 1.7 pounds, 770 grams. It's a super light portable device. You're not gonna get this much power in something so thin and light. This would have to be the thinnest and lightest laptop with powerhouse performance of a quad core ultrabook part. I don't think there's anything thinner and lighter. 8.5 millimeters thick there, only one USB 3 and it's only 3.0, it's not 3.0. So if you want USB-C or Thunderbolt 3, it's not for you. You have an SD card reader, micro SD card reader that is, and you have a display port out and that's it. Now they start at 899 in the US and about 1300 in Australia. So they're not expensive, but you know, very unique form factor and it is the top of the class. In this sort of device, there is nothing that compares to this. There are some sort of clones or copies or imitations of this they're not as good as this sound front fine speakers yeah they're pretty good you get a great content consumption experience so it's great for watching movies and stuff like that of course it's great for note taking using it as a tablet get the keyboard you get to use it with a trackpad and keyboard which the type covers are actually really good the display is a 3 by 2 ips panel 400 nits are bright i'll give it 400 nits it was 390 something just over 90 percent srgb and just over 70 percent adobe rgb so the color gamut isn't wide, but looking at the display, it looks friggin' phenomenal. I tell you now, it looks really good. Nice contrast, nice color, and it's very color accurate. So it doesn't have the wide color gamut, but having said that, you know, over 90% sRGB, it's certainly good enough, but it is bang on color accurate. Like I cannot tell the difference between the calibrated screen and the non-calibrated. So, so color accuracy is bang on. And of course it is great for taking notes. Touch sensitivity is awesome. It is a really great display. Now it has a 45 watt hour battery. Of course it is sealed in. You cannot upgrade anything as I said. Bit of winner winner chicken dinner here with mine because I nearly got 47 watt hours of battery. With video rundown tests I could get nine hours and 40 minutes. It was very consistent actually. And that was that suggested brightness put the brightness up to maximum minus an hour and 40 minutes so it was only like an hour and 40 minutes less with full brightness so that's very surprising great battery life you're going to get over seven hours just normal productivity you know web surfing watching videos etc so really good battery life considering it's so thin and light 
And with the i5, you'll get a little bit more battery life, you know, half an hour or so. So when it comes to performance, check out my gaming review if you want to know how it games. But in terms of just performance and thermals, absolutely out of this world. It will not even get to 70 degrees. And this thing doesn't even have a fan. That's the i5 model. The i7 has a fan. It's not that noisy. And it will get hotter. It will get up to around 80 degrees. And this is under full load. And these things friggin' scream. Compared to the last Surface on another planet, the extra two cores really do give you lots of power. Using Lightroom, it was super snappy, very fast. The previews loaded fast. Generating previews was fast. Exporting was fast. On another level compared to the last Surface products. In Adobe Audition, my actions of compression and noise removal, super fast. This will be friggin' amazing for music production because it has those cores, super fast cores, nice single-threaded performance. You have the multi-core performance as well. And if you have the i5, it's silent. So great music production machine. Now, when it comes to video editing, it's another story. This can edit video, no problems, even 4K content. I could play back 4K content at half, no problems. With color correction, I have to do it at quarter. I could play through high-resolution photos. You will be able to edit 4K content. Full HD, no problem. The problem is when you hit render, this doesn't have a graphics card. So, you know, my sample project where I'm used to, you know, with XPS 15s, 15 inch laptops with powerful graphics cards and MacBook Pros and Aeros and Razors, they do it in, you know, eight to 10 minutes. The Surface Book 2, the 13 inch with the graphics card does it in around 25 minutes. This thing here is like 50 minutes. I even tried Adobe Rush, which does render in the background. It uses a bit of the tricks that Final Cut use and still the exports are like 40 minutes. So you can can't get around that the exports are going to be slow because it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card if you want a video edit i suggest you get power director because that thing is the fastest video editor in terms of rendering it'll render faster than anything final cut anything but no you can edit 4k content no problem it's just the export times are slow. And if you're after a tablet, but you need fast export times, you're gonna to have to use the Surface Book 2 because that can be used as a tablet as well. Remember, if you get the performance base there with the graphics card in it, you'll get the fast render times and you'll get the tablet form factor too when you need it. So overall, my conclusion is when it comes to this sort of tablet type of device, this is the best. I mean, they're gonna make a big song and dance in a few days time, what a week's time, Apple's event when they have the new iPads and they're gonna have, yeah, all right, the new Adobe software. Mark my words now, that's what they're going to carry on about. The new Adobe software, which will work with the iPad now, basically like Photoshop and Illustrator. It doesn't have the full features that you get on the Windows or Mac one, but with this one, you can use the full Photoshop and all the other apps like the Music Production Doors, Pro Tools, Corel Drawer, Media Composer, 3D Applications, and I did run a 3D test as well. In such a small, thin and light package, this this thing is a dream. No that video editing, yeah, the renders will be slow, but you can do whatever you need on this tablet. It's a great device, but come on Microsoft, where's the Thunderbolt 3? If you could attach an external GPU to this, game changing, okay? A 700 gram, 1.7 pound device, that if you could connect this to a Thunderbolt 3, imagine that. But even regardless of that, it is still a great device. I highly recommend it. For me personally, the screen's a little bit too small at 12.3 inches, but it is taller, so it acts more like a 13 inch display. But I do prefer laptops. They're just more comfortable for me to use. But um, if you like this sort of device, put this on top of your list. Actually, just go get it. You'll love it. All right, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. If you're new around here, come on, please subscribe. And until next time, guys, tally. Oh.